first, we wanted to lead off this episode with some of the news that dropped because last time we joined everyone, Lisa, it was to preview these matches, to make some picks, to talk a little bit about some of the goings on right across the league, but some things have dropped since we were all last together. Let's start with this most recent one that folks might have seen already. If you've uh, been browsing the internet, uh, Trinity Rodman is no longer going to be able to compete uh, in the September friendly. She has a family commitment. So racing Louisville midfielder Savannah DeMello will replace Rodman on the U S women's national team roster. It is her first senior call up exciting times huge this is very exciting um this news just dropped like maybe 20 minutes ago i don't know my timing's all off this morning but it dropped this morning um a tweet i saw it as a tweet and then a press release from the uswnt coming out trinity rodman having um to go with her family during this break so she can't do that which um, it, it's very timely because this was the last weekend that we would see the internationals, right? They're now going away uh, to train with the U.S. ahead of these friendlies coming up. But DeMello is, um, this is huge for her. And this is so, so, so well-deserved. She has done fantastic this year. Um, three goals, one assist. She's started every single game that she's played in, 17 appearances for Racing Louisville, and she leads all rookies in the NWSL with minutes played. So it's truly impressive. In July, she was named the NWSL Rookie of the Month. Um, this is a player that's really taken on a lot in a role that needs to have a, someone, needs to have a veteran. And at Racing Louisville, in their midfield, they don't have that. They're struggling to find a lot of leadership, a lot of connectivity, someone to really um, take ownership of their team and of scoring goals. And Savannah DeMello is someone that completely did that. She she yeah. stepped up. She's shown that she can uh, be a threat defense or be a threat on set pieces. Uh, when she picks up the ball centrally, she can run at players and, and then spray the ball out wide. And then defensively, she makes big stops for them. It's a huge um, asset for Racing Louisville. And the fact that she's now getting a call up for the senior national team <laughs> Is massive. Now, positionally, I always think it's interesting when one player goes out and they call in another player, um, but, uh, similar to like Emily Sonnet and, and anything yeah. else that has happened this year that's out of the position. Now, there is a plethora of forwards on this USWNT roster. So the fact that they decided to call in another midfielder. Um, I'm not that surprised, but it's still interesting when that happens. It's not a like for like swap by any means, by any means, Rodman to DeMello. So um, this is six defenders now, eight midfielders, because DeMello keeps adding into that midfield group and then six forwards up top for this USWNT roster. Yeah, I love that that's a point um, that you sort of plucked out amongst all the other kind of bullet points in this you know, player getting called up. Cause for me, that was the one that, you know, sticks out the most, right. It was a little bit similar energy for me when we saw Ashley Hatch exit that CONCACAF W championship and we saw Sam Coffey get called into the mix. I was like, okay, cool. So like DeMello coming in, like, that's very awesome. Like, let's celebrate that. Um, but it's definitely not a like for like swap, like two different players for sure. Not just positionally, but in terms of like, you know, mm -hmm. what they present. Uh, on the pitch, but uh, exciting for sure. Like I, I was like, yes, like you love to see, of course, I'm going to like make the plug on this uh, episode right now. You know, we did have an interview with Savannah DeMello. I just want to remind everybody that they can uh, filter back and go, go and find that it was a uh, uh, women's cup uh, heavy, but it was cool to talk to her a bit about her rookie season, her first year adapting as a professional in the league. Um, and obviously, you know, her, her ambitions for, for women's cup and beyond as well. So it was cool to chat with her a little bit about it and then just sort of like kind of see this like story arc, like continue. So congratulations, uh, are in order for her, for sure. Uh, we also have another bit of news to sort of perhaps let's refer to it as an update. Um, some Washington spirit news, additional news around the dismissal of a uh, former head coach, Chris Ward, a uh, post match between the Washington Spirit and Houston Dash, uh, Aubrey Kingsbury and Andy Sullivan uh, were made available to the media post game. And they issued, uh, the two of them together issued a collective 
statement uh, for the players. And we'll go ahead and just read that statement uh, verbatim. Uh, it reads as we would like to start off with a statement on behalf of the players. Firstly, we are frustrated that this is necessary given our history. Secondly, we are angered by Chris Ward's answers in the piece by The Athletic. We know the idiom that there are two sides to every story, but that is simply not the case in this scenario. We know his interview to be a completely inaccurate recollection of a serious situation. And furthermore, the apology offered to us last Friday demonstrates a misalignment in his words and actions towards the team. The players fully support the decision of the club to relieve him of his duties as head coach. And we have every intention of cooperating in a proper course of action as it relates to circumstances like this one. We will no longer take any questions regarding his dismissal or make any further comments on it at this time. We are focused on our current performances and the rest of our season moving forward as a group. So uh, a statement being released by uh, the team spoken by Captain Andy Sullivan in that post game. Uh, but that was ultimately... Uh, in response to a, a interview piece that came out uh, via the athletic with Chris Ward specifically. So that, that is also the bit of news that, that sort of dropped in between this time since we uh, did our preview episode and now we're doing our recap episode. So there was that uh, interview piece that dropped and the games that happened and spirit players who made this statement in post game. So a bit of an update that we had to go through uh, in this particular situation, because the last time we did uh, any discussion about the Chris Ward dismissal was just around the fact that it was something that happened. Mm -hmm. It was done with an 11 word tweet. There wasn't a lot that was mentioned about it. I know folks were like, what does it mean? Like there's always like the, the, the extra things that come on the tail end of those types of uh, breaking news everyone's like, what does it mean? Or where are the additional answers? And, you know, what's you know, more in-depth in, in insight? And now that there's been some time that has passed, more stuff has come to light. So I know a lot of folks were, we, I know for you and I, especially Lisa, we were like, well, you want to try to follow the player's lead, quite frankly, on this. We, we hadn't seen uh, an opening statement from the players union regarding this at this, at that point, when the news dropped, we hadn't seen a player statement from spirit specifically, and perhaps there wasn't, um, if, quite frankly, perhaps there wasn't an intention for the, the, the players to release a statement. It sort of looks like they felt propelled to make a statement based off of, um, you know, the new information that arose within that, that interview. So, um, yeah. So yeah. I think it's important to touch on that because we haven't talked about it yet. So yeah. the, the Chris Ward was relieved from his head coaching duties at the Washington Spirit early last week by an 11 word tweet sent out by the club. We talked about that last Wednesday, I believe, maybe last Thursday. Um, we talked, we chatted about that tweet and how there was no additional information. Then the athletic went and did um, ex essentially an exclusive interview with Chris Ward, asking him about the situation, asking him to describe what happened, what happened at training on Friday, the 19th, which has been described up until that point as just a confrontation between Ward and a player. So they asked him, can you explain that to us? So in this article, he explained that they were doing a drill on the, on the field at training. And there was a bit of confusion. One of the players was confused about it. And he had asked that player to go out for a sub. So another player could come in. That player did not want to leave the pitch. They're competitive. They're a professional athlete. They wanted to understand. So he says, quote, there was some arguing about her going off or staying on the field. I asked her to leave again. And at the end of the day, I'm getting upset and yelling at her to get off the field. It was probably the first time all year I've raised my voice to any of the players. I certainly have a track record of yelling at referees, but it was, hey, we don't have time for this right now. You have to get off the field because we have to continue. He said if he could do it again, he would probably do it differently. But I think it's important to note that that was his statement, that really it was yeah. uh, him just asking a player to get off the field and then to have – U.S. Women's National Team internationals, uh, Andy Sullivan, Aubrey Kingsbury, go immediately into their post-game presser after their match against Houston yes. and say, before we take any questions, we have a statement. Basically, we disagree with his answer. They were angered by mm -hmm. Ward's answers in that article. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and a, that, this, really that this does not reflect their situation. So really, really different polarizing statements coming from Coach and players at this point about 
what happened at training. Now there is video. Every training practice is recorded um, for the purpose of, of many different things. But I, I believe that the NWSL and the NWSL Players Association has that video. And that's like the evidence that they're going off of. Right. I mean, that's it's honestly best case scenario. It becomes a, a little bit of he said, she said at this point, because he said head coach Chris Ward first that it really wasn't that much. He's just telling the player to get off the pitch so they can continue the drill. And then the players coming out and saying um, that is not at all what happened. Um, this was a completely different situation. So it, it's, it, this is a lot that is happening. I mean, it's not, like quite frankly, like after the interview piece, after the statement from the players, I mean, it's uh, it sounds like there probably will be an investigation. I, I haven't read anything or seen anything that that's going to be, you know, the official next steps in, in this. But I think if you've got a coach who's trying to get his side out there and players who are propelled to make a statement in light of that, that for me, for Sandra, that reads as if like there will eventually be some sort of yeah. um, further investigation around it. It was a, it was a lengthy interview. Um, that's just a snippet of it. Uh, please continue your support of women's soccer journalism and subscribe to the athletic. If you want to read the remainder of uh, the interview and uh, yeah, I just, I just sort of like, Again, like ha like starting off your post match, uh, you know, um, press conference with a, a statement, um, I think is very very calculated and, and very targeted, very smart, quite frankly, uh, by by the players. So um, I mean, there's no I argument that Andy Sullivan is incredibly intelligent, um, independent, uh, articulate player and person. So the fact that that statement came out from her, I, I don't know. I don't know. There was like a lot happening at the time, but I'm not surprised, right? If, if the players are angered and they have a moment to make a statement verbally, not a screenshot of, of words that they've typed up to put out um, from the NWSLPA, but verbally from a player sitting in front of a microphone in a post-game presser. Um, I think that was the way to do it. Get, get your word out there and then say, that's the end of it. We're not discussing this. Um, let's talk about the game. Yeah, so we'll. Uh, I'm. I, I feel like this probably isn't the end of this situation. Unfortunately, we will probably, you and I will probably come back on here and, and have another update to to talk about and sort of um, walk through to with together. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens uh, in, in the meantime. Um, but that's it for for the for the current updates of that Washington Spirit Chris Ford dismissal for now. Congratulations once again to Savannah DeMello. Uh, free agency also kicked off uh, last week, just to let everybody know uh, the first year going into effect for uh, with the uh, CBA amongst players. Players who have had six years of service uh, can now start negotiating uh, free their free agency uh, amongst various clubs or their respect, current respective clubs. There is a little bit of a hiccup, of course, in there. Nothing that's ever the first of something ever goes off without a hiccup. Um, there is some discrepancy in terms of the official list that is out of six-year players versus a list from the Players Association that they also have additional players um, who qualify under those terms, but there's a discrepancy in terms of option years right now on player contracts. So there's a little bit of back and forth things that will likely go to arbitration or currently in arbitration. And we will probably have an additional update on that as well. So I would like to say congratulations to the free agency season, but there's still some things that got to get ironed out. Uh, uh, of we'll course, there's a little, a little bit of, of loophole happening, like just a confusion in what uh, the CBA actually says, because those players whose contracts end this year should be able to start negotiations as a free agent um, as of Friday. However, if there's an option, the team doesn't need to let the player know of that option until November. And at this point, they've already lost a couple months of negotiations. So it's a, it's a little bit of back and forth. It really, uh, for those players with options, they're at a Currently, how the NWSL has written it, they're at a bit of a disadvantage because they cannot um, flex that free agency until their current team decides um, if they want to use that option or not. So then those players are at a disadvantage because all the other ones are entered into free agency. This will be ironed out. It's just a matter of time. We'll let everyone know as soon as it does happen.